Thank you very much, Stefan, for that extremely informative um, look at a really, I guess, a case study in the sense of one of the early and little known, I think, uh, efforts at uh, restitution. The, the halting process in which it took place was sort of stops and starts. Um, the reality of what set in when uh, communist nationalization uh, began. And, uh, and I think you left a lot of space for further research, further questions to be pursued, including what you mentioned at the end, the role of anti-Semitism as a motivating factor in uh, restitution agreements, um, I think which would be something uh, very interesting to pursue as well. Thank you very much for that. Um, our uh, third and last speaker on the panel is uh, Dr. Anna Ch uh, Chirich Pavlovich, who is a recipient of the Claims Conference Saul Kagan Doctoral and Postdoctoral Fellowship for researching the restitution of Jewish property in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and a PhD uh, candidate in disciplinary history at LT University in Hungary. Uh, she is, holds the MA degrees in Jewish history from Central European uh, University in Hungary and International Law and Human Rights from the European Institute uh, in Spain. Previously, she completed BA Studies in International Relations at the Faculty of Political Science, University of Belgrade in Serbia. She was a Maria Sklodowska Curie Fellow for the Researching Anti-Semitism in East Central Europe and explores Sephardi uh, revival in Bosnia as, a, as well as the intertwinement to some crucial socio-political phenomena such as civil society, popular culture, nationalism, and World War II memory in, Brit in, uh, in the Balkans. Uh, she is currently engaged in developing an online repository dedicated to digital preservation and revitalization of Jewish heritage in Southeast Europe. I know the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure whether I need, yes, I will probably need it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I think I'm too tall for okay, it. Can, can help I help to that one? This one, yes. Uh, well, I would like, of course, to thank to the, the organizers and to the claims conference and to all of the participants to, uh, uh, who presented before me because I feel that I and uh, all of us have uh, learned a lot uh, uh, so far. Uh, I thought, uh, well, I, I was also, <laughs> by the way, uh, I was also declared Anna Pavelic uh, instead of Anna Pavlovich, yes. Uh, yes, <laughs> they actually printed the booklet, yes, for me presenting about uh, uh, with the Pavelic last name, yes. It happened to me too, yes, it, it was printed, so it was very, very embarrassing for me <laughs> personally, but uh, it happens as well. Uh, um, Something interesting about me, I, I didn't know what to, uh, what, uh, what, to um, um, what information to provide, but uh, I can tell you um, that after I finished my uh, bachelor degrees in uh, political science, I promised myself never to deal with the Balkan politics and history. So I thought I will never be engaged in this, and indeed my first academic work was about European Union, about the session, about the, the legal requirements. So I was, I was very, very neutral and I, I stick to the plan. However, at one point when I, um, I got familiar with the uh, Sephardi Jewish uh, culture in Bosnia, I was uh, completely in love with it. And uh, here I am speaking about the restitution of Jewish uh, property in Bosnia, so I I broke my promise, <laughs> definitely. So this is the, the uh, overview of my presentation. I will speak, of course, about the Jewish community background and uh, uh, some general facts about the annihilation in the, uh, in the Shoah, uh, about war damage estimations and uh, communist air expropriation, about post-war Bosnia, which is a, a, a very particular case and complex political system about restitution efforts so far and I will consider some obstacles for the righteous law on restitution. Bosnia is uh, I think one of the worst if not the worst example of the restitution of uh, Jewish property so one of the most complicated cases and uh, uh, I especially thank to the organizers for including this topic 
in the um, in the uh, conference curriculum because uh, I will get to be I will get to voice the the uh, situation of uh, uh, Bosnian Jewish community. So uh, a, a little bit about their history because I'm I'm well aware that uh, it is not part of the common knowledge. Um, in, in Jewish studies as well. So first the historical records of Jewish presence in Bosnia date from the mid 16th century when Sephardi uh, refugees settled across the uh, Ottoman Empire and of course in Bosnia, uh, which uh, was uh, included in the uh, Ottoman Empire until the late 19th century when it was occupied by the uh, uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire. Uh, uh, what has changed during the Austro-Hungarian reign that uh, also, uh, also Ashkenazi uh, uh, Jewish community uh, began to settle in uh, in Bosnia, most of them in Sarajevo. So uh, most of the Jewish communities uh, before before the Holocaust and uh, and after the Holocaust uh, uh, lived in um, uh, in Sarajevo. So most of my talk will uh, consider uh, Sarajevo. Uh, so before the Shoah, uh, there was uh, about 40,000 Jews in Bosnia, and most of them, 12,000, lived in Sarajevo, which was about one-fifth of the city, city population. Uh, but uh, what uh, is also good to know is the ethnic composition of Bosnia before the, uh, the Second World War. Um, the last census was... Um, uh, conducted in 1931, so uh, according to that census, the most of the population in Bosnia was Orthodox Serbian, uh, then uh, Muslim, then uh, Croat Catholic, and there were 1.07 uh, uh, others, including uh, uh, 0 0.5 uh, Jews. Uh, the war in the uh, Kingdom of Yugoslavia began uh, Bosnia after the the, the um, uh, Austro-Hungarian period and after the, the Great War, Bosnia was included in uh, in Kingdom of uh, Yugoslavia until the uh, Second World War. So uh, when the war consumed the country in uh, April 1941, uh, Bosnia was occupied by the Nazi puppet state, independent state of Croatia. Uh, and of course, local uh, cross population uh, was uh, privileged uh, in that system, but uh, uh, also local Muslim Muslim population, or uh, today uh, Bosniak population, were declared as honorary creations. So uh, there were spontaneous and organized property robbery and mass executions of the regime uh, enemies, and not only Jews, but uh, Serbians, Roma, and political opponents. Uh, when it comes to the robbery of Jewish uh, shops and uh, organizations, uh, they were uh, firstly assigned to the most loyal members of the Ustasha regime, so-called trustees or povierenici. Uh, and they were later uh, later sold to domestic Aryans, uh, which usually meant uh, domestic, uh, domestic uh, Muslim or Croat uh, populations. Um, the new uh, Ustasha regime they issues a series uh, of law, uh, which uh, uh, laws which uh, allowed them to expropriate uh, local Jewish communities. But also similar laws were enacted also on the local. Uh, um, uh, local uh, Sarajevo level, which even more uh, um, endangered the situation of... Uh, is everything all right? <laughs> okay, it's all right. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, there was a systematic private property uh, plunder uh, that was legalized with uh, many state and uh, local level laws, which were usually copy-paste copy law uh, by the uh, Nazi regime. So they were not uh, particularly uh, original when it comes to the uh, anti-Jewish uh, legal measurements. Uh, but following the... Um, those laws, governments, and trustees uh, were assigned to the Jewish uh, and the Serbian shops, uh, but uh, this order was uh, also effective for the Jewish cultural, sports, communitarian, other voluntary organizations as well. So many of these associations, as uh, such, were uh, La Benevolencia, Israel Tomim, La Humanidad, Artus, uh, Bikur Holim, Vigitar Dolientes, uh, and so forth. Uh, these organizations operated um, 
uh, small enterprises, uh, since they uh, had their own movable and immovable property, uh, their financial means uh, generated through frequent fundraising or via passive incomes like renting properties or similar. So uh, also both uh, Sephardi and Ashkenazi religious uh, organizations had their uh, trustees assigned it to them. Uh, so they were managing the uh, Jewish property be uh, before it was sell to local uh, uh, Aryans, as I've uh, mentioned. Uh, so more than 80,000, uh, 80 percent uh, of uh, Bosnian Jews uh, were murdered in the Holocaust, uh, and about, uh, uh, according to the uh, estimation, about 2,000 survivors returned to Bosnia. But for our considerations, uh, I've found in the archives some first uh, probably the most accurate uh, estimations about the Jewish material losses uh, in the Holocaust. And according to these uh, 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 estimations, uh, the value of the, the uh, uh, looted property is uh, as this. As you can see, the, the most valuable item on the list were looted shops, manufacturers and industry. And uh, the, uh, the value was uh, one billion uh, 770 million Yugoslav dinners. But the overall value, which is uh, probably more, uh, more important for our uh, talk today, uh, is, uh, so the, the overall value is uh, 2.5, uh, or, or almost 2.6 uh, uh, billion dinners, Yugoslav pre-war dinners. But at the time it was uh, more than 47 million US dollars, and today it would be uh, uh, when we cal calculate uh, to their value, um, it would be uh, a little less than one billion dollars. So it was the, estima the estimated value uh, of the looted property uh, in 1945, but if you count, uh, count all the losses uh, during the communist regime, it adds to more than uh, uh, one billion American dollars. Uh, at the beginning of uh, Bosnia was, uh, of course, incorporated in the socialist Yugoslavia after the uh, Second World War. Uh, and in the beginning, uh, it seemed that a uh, uh, novel socialist government was willing to return all the looted property uh, which was plundered by the, the Ustasha regime. However, they quickly, uh, in less than a year, they changed their mind and decided to take this property for themselves. So in the following two decades, until the late 1960s, more than 40 laws were nationalizing private property in socialist Yugoslavia. So those were, for instance, law uh, on agrarian reform and colonization, law on property confiscation and execution, uh, law and nationalization of uh, private commercial enterprises and uh, so forth. Um, of course, uh, this affected uh, Jewish communities a lot because if they managed to uh, regain at the uh, uh, beginning of social Yugoslavia any uh, property, everything was taken for them. In addition, there were six collective aliot uh, from uh, Yugoslavia to Israel in the late 1940s and beginning of the 1950s. Uh, and they all had to renounce their Yugoslav citizenship and permanently donate uh, donate um, their property to the state. And some of them returned to Yugoslavia, but they never regained their property back. And out of this number, uh, now uh, 9,074 uh, 9, were from uh, Bosnia. Uh, but uh, coming to the complexity of Bosnia, Bosnia is not only a post-socialist country, but it is a post-conflict country. So in the beginning of the 1990s, uh, Bosnia was consumed uh, um, by the uh, inter war. So after the um, inter uh, 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 bloodshed, uh, Bosnia had to um, endure both the post-socialist, I would say, and post-conflict uh, transition, which was incredibly um, painful in terms of politics, uh, um, economy, and so far. But uh, what is also important for our talk today is the uh, Dayton Agreement, which functions as a constitution of the uh, Bosnian Republic today. Uh, and um, the main... Um, the primary concern of this agreement was to halt the 
uh, uh, to halt the war uh, and to establish a peace between the main belligerent parties, uh, or uh, as they call them, constitutive people, and those were Serbian, Bosniaks, and Croats. Uh, but the trouble with the Dayton Agreement is that it, it is uh, uh, systematically uh, discriminating minorities such as Jews, Roma and others, so they cannot run from some of the uh, state positions. But they say that the Bosnian political system is one of the most uh, complicated in the world uh, because they, had, uh, they have, uh, it is a federal republic composed of two uh, autonomous entities and every entity has its own uh, legislative body and presidents, but they also have a three-party presidency uh, uh, consisted of uh, one Croat, one Bosniak and one uh, Serb. Uh, and I think it, uh, it makes it all the harder for the, uh, any ne negotiations about the, the restitution of Jewish property because uh, they had to negotiate with three people which usually do not agree with each other and do not want to sit in the same room. So you have to be engaged in a trilateral kind of uh, negotiation. Um, uh, but, but it's also a uh, differentia specifica of the uh, Bosnian political system, and um, that is why Bosnia can hardly be called a um, typical sovereign state. Uh, it is a significant international involvement, and that is uh, to say that the Office of High Represent uh, Represent uh, Representative uh, has a special set of powers and uh, can, can uh, cancel law or enact law or can, uh, ch can um, uh, basically change any uh, state official. Uh, also, within the Constitutional Court, there are three three foreigners who are reported uh, by the President of the European Court of uh, Human Rights. But, um, to be more precise, so, uh, institutional efforts thus far in Bosnia, so Bosnia still doesn't have uh, um, a law on uh, restitution, any law on restitution, which could be the, the legal basis for the uh, local Jewish community to claim their uh, assets. But the early 2000s were um, um, seeming like a momentum for restitution and there, was, there were some significant social efforts and I would say uh, optimism, restitution optimism. Uh, there was 2003 law on religious freedom and legal position of churches and religious communities. Uh, which uh, did not help much the local Jewish community because there was no uh, law on restitution. Uh, but um, uh, Bosnian Jewish communities also uh, community uh, conducted the survey in 2005, uh, but the survey was only about their communal uh, property, not about the uh, private property or uh, hireless property, which is, I think, the most important issue, uh, especially. Uh, in uh, post-socialist countries and the countries where the uh, Jewish communities were largely an annihilated, so the high-risk property is uh, the most important part of the uh, restitution efforts. Uh, also in 2006, uh, Economic Institute published the restitution feasibility studies, uh, and for them uh, it was uh, feasible to uh, restitute and uh, to restitute uh, actual properties to Jewish and other communities that were, uh, but they were mainly refer to the, uh, the restitution of property that was seized by the, um, during the uh, communist era. But there were also efforts in 2008 and 2009 to uh, enact a law on um, denationalization, as they called them, although the, the, um, the commissions that were established in order to enact this law uh, were called the commissions for restitution, but somehow the, uh, the law turned out to be on denationalization. And indeed, it considered the period after 1945, so only the communist era uh, for the uh, restitution, which was not, uh, of course, beneficial for the Jewish community because uh, then the property could be restituted uh, to the people that actually looted the property during the, uh, the Second World War. Uh, but also uh, what is important but, uh, is that Bosnia signed the Terrorism Declaration on Holocaust Era Assets uh, and the uh, related issue. So, uh, on my opinion, 
briefly have listed the three points of what hinders the restitution of Jewish property in Bosnia. It is in first place uh, instable political uh, system played with nationalism of uh, so-called constituted people. It is the lack of social uh, recognition. The, the Holocaust is uh, detached from its local context. So uh, no one is denying Holocaust. However, it is uh, hotly debated uh, what exactly happened during the Holocaust. So uh, who was the victim and who was the perpetrator? So uh, um, it is one of the main issues as uh, Mr. Weizmann uh, uh, mentioned, so it is very uh, difficult to navigate within all those uh, different narratives. Um, but what, the, uh, what is also very important, and uh, we can find the examples um, in uh, all post-socialist countries, it is the rehabilitation of Nazi collaborators, which, uh, which I believe significantly hinders the restitution efforts uh, because Nazi era uh, 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 collaborators were uh, portrayed, portrayed as national heroes. So uh, uh, in um, in Bosnian case, important, uh, important um, uh, uh, example uh, is uh, definitely Roman Catholic Church, which is uh, holding regular masses for Ustasha leaders, but uh, also rehabilitation of domestic Muslim collaborators such as uh, Hussein Jozo. And I have to mention that I have found a publication by Rutledge. Uh, I think it was from 2017. Uh, which um, portrays Hussein Jozo uh, as uh, a prominent Balkan scholar and Muslim reformist, where well, he was an SS Sturmbannführer and who remained an unspoken anti-Semite until his death in 1982. Uh, and during the Second World War, Jozo joined 13th Waffen Mountain uh, Division of the SS Hanjar and was imam of uh, 28 regiments. Um, however, there were uh, significant efforts to uh, um, to re rehabilitate his uh, his name, and uh, a street in Sarajevo was named according to him, and also a, a primary school in Gorazde because the name uh, uh, Nikola Tesla was unsuitable, uh, obviously, for them. Uh, so th those were some of the uh, the examples, uh, but of course there are many. Uh, what can be done? I think uh, we should continue researching and overcoming memory gaps because memory gaps, uh, what I forgot to mention, are the third important uh, dimension of the destruction of Jewish communities. So uh, um, when it comes to Bosnia and many other communities, the destruction was not only material and physical in terms of killing and taking their property, but it was also a cultural destruction. So a uh, cultural dimension of genocide is, um, I believe, uh, largely underexplored and the, the creator of the notion of, of uh, genocide, uh, Raphael Ramkin, wrote a lot about it. And actually, he contemplated about the case in uh, Bosnia when it comes to the cultural genocide and what was Ustasha regime doing to local Jews and, and Serbians. Uh, so also, we, uh, we need to pay, uh, raise public awareness about the domestic Holocaust and what uh, really happened. Uh, but also advocating for restitution law that considers looting of Jewish property starting uh, from the war or set in Yugoslavia, which was April uh, 1941 and not from 1945. So, uh, in the end, if I may, just one more minute, I, I wanted to uh, show just a couple of pictures of uh, buildings. Uh, that were formerly owned by, by Jews and that are disputed. So this was a uh, building of the, their main association, La Benevolencia, and now the Cantal Ministry of Inferior. Um, this is Jacques Salom's mansion uh, from the beginning of the um, 19th century. Jacques Salom was one of the uh, um, renowned members of the Bosnian Jewish communities uh, who's, uh, who survived the Holocaust, but uh, never regained his property back. And this is Bratso Polyokan Mansions, who died in the Holocaust, but uh, uh, Villa was never returned to his family or 
um, to the Jewish communities and it remained the government owned building. I will have to stop here, but please, I, uh, I, um, I believe that I have probably forgot to mention something important and uh, um, if there were some, something uh, missing from my speech, please uh, do, do ask me to, to explain. And I would like to uh, take just a, cuff, just a minute to thank the Mr. Ivica Cerser, former president of Bosnian Jewish communities for coming here. And please, if you feel that I, there, there, there should be said, uh, there's something else should be said, please, please uh, feel free to add. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>